right so what we are going to be doing is forces and moments in machines and we are going to do planar systems but these planar systems there are a couple of caveats one is for example i have let us say something that is like this this is the planar view right and that's a hinge but when i look at it sideways then i see this body is like that this one is like that this pin here is like that and this body here is like that there may be bearings or other details that is not important if i load it in plane like this then a purely in plane response is not enough right because there has to be another moment like this to counter the moment of that so because it is not in one plane there are some effects which are neglected okay so that's the first thing that you need to be aware of is that there are situations where the planar analysis is perfectly good um it may be symmetrical for example suppose you have a piston and a connecting rod and a crank that is sort of like this and then that is on some bearing the side view being this is the piston this is the connecting rod this is the crank and it might be a symmetrical arrangement in which case you may not care the planar analysis may actually be quite good in other situations if this offset is not very big and these these dimensions are very big then it may be good in other cases you may still be interested in a planar analysis and then you may put some Uh, additional calculations to figure out what the effect of imperfect planar arrangement is okay so these are some things now the other thing i want you to think about a little bit is friction and that i will explain using this rather simple arrangement sorry let this be a solid line here is a block and here is another solid line so this is a surface of constraint this is a surface of constraint this height this sorry this distance here let it be w let this width be b and over here at some distance a let me apply a force f which is intended to make this block move that way of course the block can also rotate slightly and then make contact here and here and there can be friction so what happens under that situation slow movement so we are doing statics okay simple friction model um and then we are trying to find out assume motion then we are trying to find out how it works out so let's draw a free body diagram of just this rectangular piece and because of the small clearance and the tilting there is a contact here and a contact here contact at two places so let this normal force be n1 let the friction force 
opposing motion b mu n1 why because we have assumed that motion exists similarly there is n2 but it is also sliding in that direction so the friction opposes the motion it is mu n2 and then over here this force was f that same force f acts over here and statics that means equilibrium so now let this be x and y and we have our equations sum of forces in the x direction equals 0 sum of forces in the y direction equals 0 sum of moments about any point which we will choose equals 0 this equation tells us that n1 is equal to n2 is equal to n you see there's just no getting away from this this much has to be true all right sum of forces in the x direction tells us f is equal to mu n1 plus mu n2 which is 2 mu n because n1 is equal to n finally let us take moments about this point and that tells us let this point be a for example so sum of moments about a and let me take count clockwise to be positive right so what do we get i get f times this distance a it's not an acceleration it's just a distance I have marked it as A here. Okay? I have marked it as A here. Sorry. So, um, B and W. So, plus N 2 B minus mu n2 w equals 0. Now, because the moments from these forces are 0, they don't appear. All right. F is 2 mu n, right? So I have 2 mu n plus n b minus mu w n is equal to 0 which means 2 mu plus b minus mu something's funny a f a 2 mu n a 2 mu a b and mu w this thing times n is equal to 0 now in general this is not going to be 0 so, since it is not 0, one possibility is that n is equal to 0. That is when free motion occurs and there is no difficulty. However, in case there is friction, in that case, n is not 0, this is not 0. Where is our mistake? Our mistake is in the assumption that sliding occurs. So, when can sliding not occur? Sliding can not occur if this angle let me call it alpha and let this angle be tan inverse mu you see if alpha is less than tan inverse mu in that case what happens is a very large force chain in this direction equal and opposite forces can be there and we will never find out because they are inside the friction cone okay and in such a case this small force is not going to be able to nudge that and it will self-lock so this is one of the problems that you can have in machines with friction if they self-lock if that is by design then the system will work very well and if that is not part of your intention then you could have a lot of trouble okay so how do we avoid that lubricate 
How does that help? Tan inverse mu becomes small. When tan inverse mu becomes, well, you know, the Coulomb friction model may not be such a good model for oil lubrication, but if you think about it as low friction, if you think about it as tan inverse mu being small, then this inequality will not hold and it will not self-lock. The other is to make alpha big. How do you make alpha big? You make alpha big by coming here and noticing that instead of having this block long, you would have it like this. So then alpha would be a much larger angle. It would be this angle, much larger. And then you could slide this along. Of course, if it is deformable, you think of it as very long and you think of it as deformable like a pipe or rubber or something, then it will bend and touch the surface. That is an entirely different problem. Pulling may be easier than pushing in such a situation, but we will not think about that anymore. So I have now told you some of the ways in which this kind of analysis is possibly misleading. Having said that, we can now talk about analysis of forces and moments. So forces and moments, I've got this red boundary here. So let's say I have some body and on this body there are some hinges and there are some forces. So there is a vector force here which I will call F1 and I will underline it to indicate that the direction of the force is not known yet. There may be another force here which I know it is perfectly horizontal and I'll call this F2 and if I don't underline it that means this arrow is the direction and the direction is known. Maybe there is another vector here which is F3 and its direction is not known. Given this F2 over here, I may use unit vectors. So I can call them I and J or I may call them um, EX and EY. In one previous video, I wrote i as a complex number, but then I put a cap on it. That was a mistake. I have written that in the comments. Normally, when I put a cap, I mean a unit vector. And when I just write i, I mean I'm using complex notation. And that is the square root of minus 1. Okay, so I hope there is no difficulty. Maybe there is also a moment like this. The moment is a free vector, it can move around within the free body diagram. Let us say this thing has a center of mass located here. We need to know where it is, that is G. Let us say its mass is M and its moment of inertia planar about G is J. In that case, these things are fundamental. The sum of forces is equal to mass times the acceleration of G. In planar dynamics, that is two equations. Okay. Also, if I take any line in the body and locate it like this with an angle theta, we will say theta dot is equal to omega, theta double dot is equal to omega dot. We may sometimes refer to it as alpha for angular acceleration, but sometimes we will use alpha to denote some angle. You have to be alert to the context to figure out what we are talking about. Now, this will usually be taken counterclockwise. So then we will say sum of moments about G counterclockwise is equal to J omega dot. Okay, so this in the planar case is one equation. These are the equations of dynamics of rigid bodies in plane motion. And this can be applied to every piece in the system. So now let us do some examples. So for example, suppose I have a four bar linkage. This is 1 and 1. The inertia of 1 is 
infinite here. It is the frame. It is not moving. Effectively infinite. All right. So now this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. And then using methods that we have been discussing, theta 2 here, theta 3 here, theta 4 here. Okay. Now let me just do one case so that you understand what is going on. Let us say the acceleration, I'm sorry, the center of mass of link 3 is here. Let me call it G3. Okay. Now, let's say this point is P and let's say this point is Q. Now, we are interested in the acceleration of G3. This is equal to the acceleration of P plus the acceleration of G3 relative to P. This is one way to do it, but we are using these analytical methods in MATLAB and so we will do this in a slightly different way. Okay, so what we will do here, I'm going to use red or orange to help you identify what we are doing. Let us say this distance is LG and let us say this angle is beta. Okay, in that case, the position of G the position vector of G, and I'm using complex notation here, is equal to L2 e to the power i theta 2 plus Lg e to the power i theta 3 plus beta. Once I have this, then I can differentiate twice and I will get the acceleration of G. Okay. Because from other equations I have got theta 3 double dot etc. So I will be putting them in here and then I will get the acceleration of G. Once I have that, I have the acceleration of G, I have the angular acceleration of that link, then I have to come back here and draw a free body diagram. And to save space, I'm just going to do it in this little area so that it is clear to you. This P, that is a hinge. Q, that is another hinge. So there is going to be a force FP over here. There is going to be another force FQ over here. Okay. So now, how many equations will we get for momentum balance of this link? We will get three equations, but over here we have two unknowns and over here we have two unknowns. So notice that we have got this piece, we have got one equation, I'm sorry, one uh, free body diagram, three scalar equations, but we have four scalar unknowns. However, we can draw a free body diagram of this part. So this part looks like that and there is going to be a force from the ground. I'm sorry, I shouldn't call it G from the ground. Let me call it frame 1 vector. What is this force going to be? This is going to be minus FP. So that part is clear. So two new unknowns. But actually this mechanism is driven from here. So there is also going to be a moment here. That is the moment needed to drive the mechanism. So there are three unknowns here, right? This moment and two vectors. Three equations for this free body diagram. Two from the vector FF1, I mean. Two from this vector and one scalar here. Three unknowns and there are three equations for this free body diagram. This free body diagram, three equations, four unknowns. And the last free body diagram, over here, this point is Q now. Over here, the force is minus FQ. This does not have any new unknowns in it. 
and over here there is no moment this is not driven and so over here we will have some ground reaction force f f for frame 2 and you see in this free body diagram which i am going to encircle in green now this free body diagram there are only two unknowns three equations this free body diagram which i am going to encircle in some purplish color there are four unknowns three equations so this one and this one together is six unknowns six equations and then this one gives us another three and three so total nine unknowns nine equations okay and we can solve this in matlab it is easy not that easy when you are doing it for the first time so how are we doing this in matlab let's make a list of the tasks right so one find all position quantities find velocity quantities find acceleration quantities draw free body diagrams for each link five recall what is driven and what is free locate center of mass and moment of inertia j's set up linear momentum balance and angular momentum balance and those you can solve in MATLAB that's the principle if you want analytical results then you have to solve it symbolically okay so this is where we stand let's do another simple example so that you can see what's going on maybe a little clearly all right slider crank our second favorite system We are neglecting friction it is well lubricated okay so there is a force here which we will call p and there is a torque here m which we will call m right so it may be that i'm operating it as a compressor so i'm turning this one round and round i'm turning this one and then this is the pressure of the gas or it may be that this is an engine in which case this is the pressure of the burning fuel gas mixture and then I am turning the engine crankshaft to do work outside it doesn't matter in this particular position so let us say this angle is theta 2 theta 2 dot less than 0 some negative number is given maybe theta 2 double dot is even 0 maybe there is a big flywheel which we will do later but maybe something like that it doesn't matter maybe it is driven at a constant speed maybe it is not maybe our goal 
is that these are given and we want to find theta 2 double dot. It doesn't matter. The equations that we have are clear enough. Right? So once again, we have a free body diagram of this link, which looks like that. And this moment is there. That is the moment acting on it, driving it. There is a reaction from the ground, which we will call F, F1 vector value. And there's if this point is A, that is the joint there, let us put a vector force here and call it FA. So that's one free body diagram. Here is another free body diagram. This free body diagram for this body, let me move it here. No, that didn't work too well. Yeah, that's better. That's what I want. Okay, so here is the other free body diagram. This force FA equal and opposite. Remember to call it minus FA or you will be confused and make a mistake. This is the block B. So over here we will put some vector force FB. Then we finally have the free body diagram for the block. And on this block over here we will put minus F b the normal force n from whatever this constraint surface is this p okay if there is a small friction then we can incorporate it if it is not going to be locking and doing things like that the way this is drawn it seems that it is moving to the right and so the friction will be like this so if there is a small friction force, we can include it over here without too much trouble. That friction force is going to oppose the motion. Now, what you need to realize is that this is treated as a block. The only It does not have any rotations. The position of this normal force could actually be here or here, adjusting the moment. We are not, so we won't write angular momentum balance for sliding components. Okay, so there are only two equations. There are only two equations here. There are three equations here. There are three equations here. How many unknowns? Right? So two, this is the driving moment. This is, we assume that it is known. Um, that force P, you will have to see. Now, so here, this force is unknown, so that's two. This force is unknown, so that's two. This force is unknown, so that's two. Let me do it with a different color. Let me do it with red here, or orange or something. Yeah, that's orange. Let's make it red. Two. Two here. Two here. I'm not counting this one because it is already counted, right? Then over here, this one is 1. This is already counted, so it's not counted here again. This one may be Coulomb friction, so then it does not introduce a new unknown. Otherwise, we have to know what it is. And maybe this is one unknown also. So maybe there are two here. Okay. So um, if, for example, accelerations are known um, and this force is to be found, then that is one of the unknowns. If the force is known and accelerations are to be found, then something is there. So these are the unknowns in our equations. These are the things for which we will write momentum balance. We will get 3 and 3 and 2. We will get 8 equations. Unknowns. One way of counting is 2, 2, 2 and 2. 8 unknowns. 
So, for example, if all the accelerations and things are known and you are asked to find, therefore, what does this say about the pressure or something? Or what does this say? Suppose the pressure is specified and the moment is to be found. That is fine. Then this will become an unknown. This will be known. Number of unknowns will be the same. So, if that is the pressure, what is the moment needed to drive the machine at this rate? So, you can account for the accelerations and everything like that. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that is there in force and moment analysis. There are some further complications. These are very easy complications to produce. I am not uh, enthusiastic about them, but you really need to know them. So, for example, suppose I say that there is an elliptical piece and then there is a circular hole cut out of it. Someone somewhere must know how to find total mass center of mass, moment of inertia, these have to be computed, right? So, in fact, if you have CAD packages, then even for 3D things, the package will calculate these things for you, but you should know how to do this. So, for that, you use things like things that you learn in the dynamics class, you know, you learn parallel axis theorem, you learn that, then you do integration, then you know some basic, sorry, know some basic shapes etc okay so this is the sort of thing that is part of the background that you bring from the dynamics class this um, these free body diagrams that we are drawing drawing comes from the dynamics class the momentum balance equations come from the dynamics class these friction things also in principle come from the dynamics class um, you are understanding that there may be self-locking, your understanding of motion quantities. So, you realize that the dynamics class is an important prerequisite for this course. So, that's all for this video and we will talk again soon.